What's going on YouTube? This is What Would Josh Do? And yet again, I am very excited to bring to you another video. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing or unwrap it. That's it, it's empty. Voila. I am super, super excited about this little guy. Do you want to know why? When I first got into like, you know, twerp recovery and they supported USB OTG, I would take, instead of taking the ROM and sticking it on my internal storage or my external storage, I would get one of these little micro USB OTG cables and then I would take this and I would plug it into the bottom of the phone and the phone would pop up a little file browser and I would be able to copy the ROM back and forth between this thing and the phone or I could just flash the ROM directly from the flash drive to the phone. So like my Note 2 AOKP video, my Galaxy Nexus uh, video on AOKP or CM11. So some of my older videos, I use one of these guys. And then recently, I got this little Minova SD card reader. So you take it and you plug it into the bottom of your phone. That's fine and dandy. That's really cool. I love it. It's awesome. Preparing USB storage. I can copy files back and forth between this guy and my SD card. But whenever I wanted to get the ROM, I would have to take this, put it in here, and then take this and stick it in my computer. You know, that's fine. It's only a couple extra steps, but this is only USB 2.0. So what I would do is I would just take the little SD card out, put this inside my USB 3.0 card reader, and this is an Extreme Pro card. So this card goes at about 70 to 80 megabytes per second. So it takes just a few seconds to transfer over a one gig file. So then when I was done with it, I would put it back in here and I would take this and plug it into the bottom of the phone. This, all you need. You don't need this and this together to use it in your computer. You just need this. So, you can share files between your computer, tablet, and Android phone 10 times faster, micro USB and full-size USB. Rapid read-write speeds allow playback of videos and music from the LeafBridge 3.0. No network, Wi-Fi, or battery required. It requires Android 4.1 or higher and an enabled USB on-the-go system. May work with other phones. So, this works with pretty much all phones except for you unfortunate Nexus 4 users. It does not work with the Nexus 4. So it's very, very light. Like the packaging just feels very minimalistic. So we're gonna flip this open. And as you can see right there, download a file manager from Google Play, plug the leaf bridge into your mobile device, easily share files between them. So that's it. <laughs> it's that simple. That's it. This little guy right here, like this, that's cool and all, but you have to have this to transfer to the computer. And it's only USB 2.0, so it's very slow. This is awesome. So we take this, we plug it into the bottom of our, let's get our Nexus 5 here. And let's plug this into the bottom of our Nexus 5. And then, do I have stick mount installed? No, I do not have stick mount installed. So since this is rooted, I need to download an app called stick mount. If your device is not rooted, you can download an app called Nexus Media Importer. It is a couple dollars or a few dollars, but you can transfer files back and forth between your Android device or your Nexus device and this flash drive right here. So we're gonna go ahead and go with a different app called Stick Mount. Basically, Stick Mount is a much better app. The Nexus Media Importer lets you import and export media, but um, I mean, it's it's not, it's like you have to have that app to do the stuff. So like, say you put your titanium backup, say you have a 16 gig Nexus 5, and you wanna keep your three or four gigabytes of titanium backup stuff on an SD card, this app will let you open up titanium backup and navigate to your USB storage and tell the team backup to read and write your backups from there. But with Nexus Media Importer, you've got to keep importing and exporting and it's just, it's not nearly as convenient. And I paid for the pro version, so I'm gonna go ahead and download that as well. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and open up stick mount. And then, no thanks. When I hit mount, it's gonna ask for root permission. So I need to go ahead and just grant it root permission. Now, any app that I need to use, like, let's download an app. I like to use uh, ES File Explorer just because it's free and a lot of people really like free. I like paying, I like, I, anytime there's a really, like if there was a pro version of this app, I'd freaking buy it. Anytime there's an app that I use on a day-to-day -day basis and it works very well, I buy it. So on a Nexus device, you'll see this thing called USB storage, SDA1, and there's your flash drive. So we can go back to our internal storage and we downloaded this app, right? So let's go ahead and, down, let's go ahead and hit copy and then go to our SDA1, and then we can press on the paste button, and there we go, now it's on our thing. Now the light is actually on this side, on Nexus devices, and see it flashes to let you know there's activity, so that's important to me. It actually in indicates that there's activity going on, but on Nexus devices, that little port is different. Like on the HTC One, it's flipped, so you'll actually see the light while it's transferring. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit unmount on stick mount and it's going to unmount that uh, USB storage. So we'll pull that out. It's very, very tight fit, which is nice. It doesn't feel like it's gonna be, you come loose and slide out real easily. So let's go ahead and go over to our HTC One here. Let's plug this in. Okay, so the light's still on the other side on this one, but uh, we'll we'll go ahead and uh, download a free app called ES File Explorer on this one too. All right, we'll install it, and then whenever we open it up, it won't be called USB storage. You'll actually be able to go up here to where it says SD card, and you'll be able to switch that to USB. And on here, you can see that we have. Um, some folders, and we have this exposed installer that we copied. So I can go ahead and install the exposed installer on my rooted phone. And we'll see this device isn't rooted because I recently unrooted it because I went to the Sprint store today and they ordered a brand new HTC One, and I got to send this HTC One back to them. So I locked the bootloader thanks to having S off. I was able to lock it instead of relocking it, so they don't know that I ever rooted it. And I'm gonna get my new one and root it, of course. But, so without having root, this device will work. I know some people go, well, so I had to root my phone to use it? No, that's just for Nexus devices. Um, something I wanna show you real quick is, there's a way to safely eject it by going to settings, and then going to storage, and then going down here to unmount USB storage. As you can see, I have a crazy amount of storage in there. <laughs> that's just insane I got the 64 gig uh, because of the simple fact that I I gonna use it like crazy whenever you go into recovery and you do an Android backup of your phone you can store that Android backup on here so say you got a Moto G the 8 gig or the 16 gig you can store your backup on here now let me show you this this is one where it's not flipped it's a very, very tight fit, like I said earlier. So on here, we need to actually download this app called Nexus Media Importer, and I'll go ahead and use this device, okay. Uh, connecting to the USB device, there it is. So I can go to Advanced, and you can see on the leaf bridge right there that I have some files on here. <laughs> I don't know really how to use this app too well, but see right here you can press this and you can disconnect the the USB OTG cable and uh, whatever. So I don't know how to use this app too well, but essentially as you can see it's flashing and I can see some of the stuff like that Android folder. I don't know how I bring this down and See, this is the this is the internal storage on here. So like, I could take, oh, there's the, ex my bad. There's that exposed installer. Um, I can probably long press on that or press on it. Choose, well, I don't know how you would, maybe you drag it, let me try that. No, see, I, I don't know how to use this app, but I know that that file 
the exposed installer is something I moved on there when I had my Nexus 5. So with the Moto G, with the Nexus device, you can use Nexus Media Importer, but as you can see, you can't just open up any old file explorer, like ES File Explorer, and as you can see, there's no USB storage on there, and there's no, U it's just any other file explorer cannot see the files that are on there unless you use the Nexus Media Importer app. When I root this thing, hopefully stick mount will support the Moto G, but as of right now, if you're someone that re absolutely refuses to root a Nexus device or a Moto G, you can use Nexus Media Importer. It's just not nearly as convenient as rooting your device and installing stick mount, which will let you use any app to access the files that are on your flash drive. Now let's go ahead and go over to the computer and transfer a very large file. Okay, so I'm gonna take this little guy right here and I'm just gonna slide it this way and now I can access the USB 3.0 stuff and you'll know because the USB 3.0 will be blue and the port on your laptop should be blue. There are some HPs that say SS instead of being blue. So that's just how you'll know. So let's go ahead and plug it in. And you can see the little light flashing and Windows should ask about drivers installations and stuff. All right, so we're gonna take a file like um, this, this, uh, this one right here is like a gig. So let's take it, we'll copy it. It's 0.98 gigs. So let's go over to here and then let's paste that. And you'll see, just look at this. Look at this. It's going, I can hit this little button with TerraCopy and safely eject a drive, but it's going at 26 megabytes per second to the, uh, uh, you know, 32 now. So it's going at a pretty, so it's going at a pretty good speed to the USB 3.0 flash drive. <laughs> it's not crazy fast. I have some USB 3.0 devices that go faster than that, but you know, it's not real. That was a gig and you see how quickly this is transferring. That's not too shabby. So let's go ahead and delete that file from our computer and then let's take it. Let's copy it back to our thing and see how it is moving it or well, going from the computer to, or going from the flash drive to the computer. So we're going at about 43, 50. Uh, can we get faster than 50? I don't know. Can we safely eject it? This one's not letting us do it. Yeah, okay, so that one let me do it. I can, uh, if I hit that little button, it'll pop up here and say the leaf bridge 3.0 is ejected and can be removed. So I'll go ahead and pull it out now. As you can see, the light's off. So we'll use the Note 3 since we haven't used it just yet. For an example, we'll take the little guy right here. We'll flip it. And then we'll plug it into the bottom of our Note 3 here. <laughs> that is, I can't get over how tight that fit is. It's just insanely tight. Um, whenever this pops up, it'll bring up the My Files app from Samsung. And you can see if you go to All and then you choose USB Drive, there's that folder we transferred that had the RUU right there to uh, whatever. So we could like press on this one, hit Menu, Copy, and then go to our SD card and paste here. And then it'll copy all the files that were on this to the phone. Now it's only going to go at USB 2.0 speeds because it's just the limitation of the device. This right here, the micro USB OTG connection is only USB 2.0. So it's still moving at a pretty decent speed as you can see there though. So you saw how convenient that was to take a ROM that you want to flash and to take it from your download on your computer to safely eject, you'll just drag this down on a Samsung device and hit the USB mass storage connected. And then it will say that the USB storage can be removed safely. So we'll pull it out. So you take this, plug it in your computer, transfer the ROM, the, the video file, like a movie, uh, a folder for songs and stuff, transfer it there. Then when it's done, you'll just press this and you'll switch it over to the micro USB OTG and you'll plug it into the bottom of your phone. And it's that simple. You don't have to deal with Wi-Fi being really, you know, not that fast 
or being far away from Wi-Fi or not having Wi-Fi around. It's just, it's beautiful. And then to close it, you just do this. And now it's not going to, you know, get hurt or damaged or anything like that. So this is definitely a much more convenient way. And I can take this SD card and I can actually put this in a phone that doesn't currently have an SD card in it because I don't, I didn't have enough SD cards to go around. So I could put this back in there. And this is something that, I don't know, I might still use it every now and then, or I might put this in my backpack. So when I'm out and about, I can just use this on family members and friends and etc. For at home use, I can use this. Put my Android backups on here, put all my titanium backup stuff on here, put music, videos, put anything I want, thanks to this little guy right here. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It's just a small click, but trust me, it goes a long way, and it lets me know you enjoyed the video and you want to see more videos like this. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Links are below. Please click where it says show more to expand the description and see all of the links. If you're new here, please subscribe. I've got many more videos coming very soon. This is What Would Josh Do? And I'm out.